What she would do when she found this person, though, wasn't anything she was prepared to entertain. She got in her car, determined to hire a private investigator. Back at Fred's executive suite at the top of the Rex Corp building, Fred and his best friend Parker had ordered sushi for lunch. I thought you and I should talk, said Parker. This whole situation, you know, you having a new fiancé that Jake loves while you're divorcing my sister. That's a bit awkward for me. Yeah, I can see where it would be, answered Fred. I'm sorry about that, but you can't be all that surprised, Parker. You can see how Beatrice spent and spent but didn't give much affection to me, or Jake, her own son. Oh, don't get me wrong, Parker continued. I agree that Beatrice has not behaved in the best manner possible, but I think losing everything has taught her a thing or two. She's trying to get help and work on herself. Are you sure there's no chance whatsoever that she can have another chance? Fred removed his napkin from his lap and tossed it on the table. So that's why you wanted to have lunch with me? To try and convince me to take your selfish sister back? After she abused my son and tried to have my fiancé kidnapped? Parker held out his hands. Look, I'm not explaining away her behavior. She has a lot to make up for. But I do think she knows that. And Fred, she's my sister. I have to at least ask. I promise I'll never bring it up again, okay? It's really difficult to be best friends with you and Uncle to Jake, while also being Beatrice's brother and wanting to be a good brother to her. Fred stood up from the table. I can appreciate where you're coming from, and I'm sorry about the position that all of this puts you in. But Parker, please, hear this and hear it loud and clear. Beatrice is not getting another chance from me, and I value our friendship enough that I'm uncomfortable discussing your sister with you anymore. Parker reached out and grabbed Fred's arm when he turned to leave. Okay, okay, you're right. It was wrong of me to bring it up again. I guess my role in all of this is to be someone Jake can lean on and to learn how to be a good uncle to Quinn's kids, too. Fred looked at Parker's earnest face and nodded. Thank you. Parker nodded and released Fred's arm. Parker followed Fred out of the executive suite, then rode the elevator down to the lobby of the Rexcorp building. As Parker walked out of the revolving doors, his sister approached him. Well, she asked, were you able to convince him? He's not budging, Parker told Beatrice. Beatrice crossed her arms. Then maybe we need to try a different tactic. I want my husband and his money back. Are you going to explain who bailed you out of jail? Asked Parker. You won't believe it, said Beatrice. Do you remember Clive Henderson, that snivelly British kid I graduated with? He's apparently a big entertainment producer now. Clive Henderson? What the hell? Right? It's ridiculous. Anyway, his production company bailed me out because they want me to start a video series that's all about fashion and society life and doing tell-alls about what it's like to be the ex-wife of a famous billionaire. Are you serious? Said Parker. You don't think that will make things harder for you? Legally? Look, snapped Beatrice so loudly that Parker momentarily had to hold the phone away from his ear. I need money. I have to find a place to live. I have to pay my divorce attorney. If Fred is determined not to give me another chance, then I need to bring in a lot of money, somehow, and soon. And Clive and his people think that my channel would be good TV. They want to produce it. So what do you got to do, I guess? Answered Parker. Just be careful, okay? I don't want to see you get hurt. Never, darling, she cooed, saying her goodbyes and hanging up. Parker just laughed and shook his head. If nothing else, Beatrice was certainly being herself. He headed out into the busy city, several blocks up on the same city street, 
Quinn Murphy was on her way to an appointment with a private investigator. But she would never get there. The light turned green, and Quinn continued forward in the long procession of cars. Despite the red light in the opposite direction, another car zoomed forward, ignoring the stoplight and T-boning Quinn's car in the middle of the intersections with a sickening crash. Hi, Quinn here. And if you're wondering what happens next, click on the link in the description to listen to the full audio series. You can also watch the next episode here in the playlist.